Hi everyone, it's Rose from Child Care Connections and I'm here to bring you our very final virtual art class that we've been doing for kiddos um, throughout our coloring contest. And just a couple of quick um, reminders and updates. Our coloring contest is um, all wrapped up. Now it's just time to celebrate. And we are so excited. You can follow that link right down at the bottom of the screen there, and it will take you to all the fun activities that we have going on. One really important thing um, that we would love for you to help us with is to pick our coloring champions this year. Um, so we have a people's choice component. And so all of the entries that have been submitted are on our website and you can actually go in and vote on your top three in each age category. Now remember we have five age categories. So kids were all challenged to submit an entry that showed what is their favorite thing to do outside. And they did an awesome job. And so how we are kind of grouping everything together is by these different age categories. So you get three votes in each of the age categories. Go in and just vote on those. People's Choice is going to be open until next Wednesday. That is April 14th. Had to remember what month we're in. Um, and then we'll be celebrating and doing awards on the 15th. And we have some really fun prizes and awards. We have these awesome kids aprons for um, when they're coloring or even helping you cook um, that recognize that they were the champion this year for their age group. We're also gonna be doing some great art supplies and age appropriate um, games and toys and things like that. Um, on the 15th, we'll be doing our celebration, announcing the winners. We're going to have some really fun door prizes and different things, too. Um, we also have a silent auction that's going right now. This is to help raise funds to support our work at Child Care Connections. And this is a chance for you to become an early childhood champion. Um, all of that information is on that same page listed below. So you can just hop on there and vote on your favorite entries um, and maybe bid on an item if you want. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and just introduce our um, artist for today. We have Sandy Van Minendorp, and she is a local artist. She's known for murals, paintings, and everything. Um, she is really just amazing. And so she has an art class ready um, for us to share with you today. And I'm going to go ahead and get that started. Give me one second here. All right, we're ready to go. Oh, sorry. Everybody, thank you for joining me. I'm gonna do a simple art lesson showing you how to do a very fun flower. And the flower I'm doing today is a sunflower. We're gonna be using either watercolor markers, they have to be watercolor, or a watercolor crayon, which is something new that I discovered. And that's what I'll be using today. So what we're going to start with, we're going to have five colors, orange, yellow, green, brown, and black. That's all we need to create this. And we're going to start in the top half of the page. So if you look at your half and come up here about, about there, we're going to use just a dot right in the middle to get started. I'm trying to make it good and bright so you can see it. Okay, that's a dot. Now we're going to to different lines that are going to intersect that dot. Kind of like pieces of the pie, only we're making some skinny and some fat, and that's okay. It should almost look like a spider web at this point. Now we're going to take and make the points. A sunflower doesn't have rounded petals, it has pointy petals, and different flowers have different shapes. But a lot of this, you could make this into a daisy if you wanted to, you can make it into any flower, but today it's a sunflower. To do that, if you know how to make the letter V, we're connecting one dot, one end of the line to the other with a V. And we're doing that all the way around. So on top, it's gonna to be more like doing a mountain, connecting those ends of the petals, ends of the lines to make petals out of points like this. And keep going all the way around until you get your points all done. Some will be skinny, some will be fat. That's okay. Pop petals all look different. At this point, we're going to stop 
and look at the center. Now, the center of a sunflower, as you know, is made up of seeds, and they're pointy. They have textured, is what we call it. They're not flat and shiny. So to do that, we're going to make them look a little bumpy as we color it. And the sunflower head is, is quite large. You don't see as much of the petal as you, you would think. When it's fully ripe, if you go halfway between the point and the dot, that's where you start, and we're going to go a bumpy circle. It doesn't have to be perfect, people. I just it used to be about a circle. Then we're going to take our brown crayon and we're going to color in circles, not back and forth, not up and down, in circles. Okay? And we're going to go all the way around in circles. Now, the way this finishes when we add our water to our watercolor pencil or watercolor markers, the more color you have, the more paint you will end up with on the paper. But you can decide if you want more white showing or if you want more color showing, if you want more brown showing, you decide. But it should look something like that when you're done. And then you take your black crayon and we're going to go just around the outside. By doing that, we're going to make the center look like it's coming at us. It's a fun, fun thing to do. So we're just going to take our black just around the edges in circles again, as big or as small as you want them to be and just color around the edge. It already has a little dimension, but when we add the water, it's gonna look really cool. Now we're gonna go back to the petals. The petals don't exactly scream petals to me right now. They look like lines with points, and we're gonna take and make them look like petals now. So if you take your crayon or your marker, starting at our center, make it more curved to the point. We're just reshaping just by making, instead of a straight line, a little bit of a curve to it. And I'm gonna choose my fat ones first. Just really get them to have a nice shape. You're almost like taking the little corners off. That's all we're doing. Taking the corners off and rounding out these petals. You wanna do that with all of them. We're just using orange right now because that's the darker part of our color yellow. Oh, my pad's a little floppy. There we go. And then when you find some that are skinny, like this one, we don't need to make the whole shape. We can just start here and curve up and connect to the other ones. They will look like they're sitting behind a little bit, a little bit of dimension with your flower. And just make them all look up. See now already they're starting to look a little more like petals. Now one thing that petals have, if you look at them, they're, they're usually not one solid color. There's usually darker colors in there, lines that carry, their veins that carry the water to the flower tips. So we're gonna draw a few lines in there. You really probably only need one or two. Notice how one of mine is longer and one's mine is shorter. That's also very nice to do. Oh, it looks like I missed a petal. It'll help you find what you missed. So one long, one short, or if you've got really fat petals, you could even do three, just so long as they all end in a different spot. Starting up from the center, we want those lines to be connected to the center. And they can be wavy. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be exactly the same. They can follow the shape of the petal if you want, or they can be completely straight. You decide. But now we have some that's looking more like a flower. And we're going to go back and we're going to pick up our yellow. Now it's time for our yellow. When we color in, we oftentimes just want to color any which way it works. You can do that. But if you want this to look a little bit more like a flower, color your yellow the same direction that your orange lines go. Up and down or the bottom up and down on the top. Here you can color in all yellow or you can leave some white showing. It doesn't matter. You do what you want. As I said before, the more color you add now, the more color you will have to paint with. So you're just going to go around your sunflower and color yellow. And don't worry about making a mess. It will be fine if it's a little bit outside the lines. No one's going to look. 
Nice big long lines, works good. And should look like that. Now, a sunflower has leaves. The leaves are really the same shape as the petals. And they lie behind. So we're gonna start on a petal and draw a pointy sunflower. Add one line down the middle and then the vein lines actually come off of that middle line. And I also want to add a little bit of this dark green color, just a little. And I'm going to do at least three, maybe four green leaves. I kind of look around and say, oh, here's a spot. I could use another leaf. And then we have to have a stem. The head is pretty big, so your stem can actually be quite thick. I'm going to add a little bit of the dark green, just a few lines is all you need. And then some stems here to add a couple of extra leaves. Leaves are fun. They're kind of a oval shape, if you like shapes, with a point. That's all they are. And now I've got my yellow in my hand yet. Because green is made from yellow and blue, we can use yellow to make the green look brighter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add yellow on top of my green. And again, you can decide how much you want. You can leave white behind, that's okay. Or you can fill it all in. The stem gets a little yellow too. The yellow kind of represents where the sun is hitting your leaf, so you could even put more yellow on the top. When we get this far, we have our coloring phase done, and we're going to pick up our brush with a little bit of water. We're going to start in the center, and I'm going to work in the middle. And I notice I'm even, I'm even using my brush in circles, because I kind of want that brown to loosen up and become pink. What I've already colored, we can use for paint. And then when I get to the outside, notice how dark that looks and how much it's popping. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be straight. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. We just want to get that color worked in a little. And then you can go back and play with your color a little bit. And we still want some texture, and that's what we've got. Now we're going to clean our brush. And this time we're going to go to our petals. Now I like to start next to the dark and we're just going to put water on four petals. I start with four and all I'm doing is brushing it on. Now that it's had time to sit a minute, now I can take my brush and I can work that orange into the yellow a little bit. Just loosen it up and again, now you have paint. You can play with that paint a little bit. If it goes out of the lines, don't worry about it. It's just part of the fun. And I did four, now I'm going to wet four more petals. I get the water right onto the orange as well, so it all gets wet. Now when I go back, I can use my brush to loosen and work some of that orange into the yellow, which will make that yellow look more gold colored, which is a little bit more sunflower yellow. When we mix the orange into the yellow. And now I'm painting my four petals again. I like to do four. It seems to work about the best. And then I'm going to go back. Oop, I've got some drips. You won't. You're probably working on a flat surface. On the easel, sometimes paint runs. That's okay. Okay, now I got a little bit more painting. One, two, three, four more petals. And now I go back and I work it in again. Any kind of brush will work. Obviously, I'm working on a big page here. You can work on something small. You don't need a very big brush. And I might even take my brush and go around the edge a little bit to heal and cover up any white around there that I may still have. There. I can even take that dark and go over some of the, of the orange colors to make my petals separate a little if I pull some of that brown into it. Depends on how creative you decide to get. There. 
a little more dimension. Now it's time to do the leaves. Again, clean your brush, get water on it again, wet down all the leaves this time. We're not going to wait, we're not going to do just a few, just get all of them wet. go back and work it. You get that green and yellow mixed together. What's nice about drawing it in with your marker or with your crayon is you will see some of the lines, the veins and all that will stay and yet you'll still have color throughout the whole leaf. And we are just about done. And there you go. We have a sunflower. Have a good day. Bye-bye. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Sandy, for doing an art class with us. We really had so much fun watching that. I can't wait to try this out with our kiddos at home. Um, I know I love watercolor pencils. They are always so fun to play with. Um, right down at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see that um, Sandy actually offers art classes and some other things too. So if you're interested at all, you can reach out to her right there on her, um, right on her website. And we just wanted to say thank you again to everyone who's been joining us for these art classes throughout our second annual coloring contest. We've been having so much fun. And just remember, you can always visit our YouTube channel or actually our website, and you'll be able to find all of these videos there, as well as you can find them again on our Facebook feed and things too. So if you wanna go back and rewatch them later, um, you are totally welcome to do so, and they are right there. Um, and we are so excited to get to do our awards next week. So please don't forget to hop onto People's Choice and um, vote for all of your favorite entries. Um, and with that, I think we're all set for today. So thank you so much for joining us. And we will look forward um, to seeing all of your votes and everything too. Thank you. Bye.